right, so here we are in the newly released B1B Lancer by, I could be pronouncing the name of this company wrong, uh, Vertavia, I guess. Uh, apparently, they released it back in uh, Microsoft Flight X or the, whatever the previous one was. I did not really play that one as much because I was on X-Plane then. And it may have been an X-Plane as well, I just never did have it, but apparently they just remodeled it, boosted it up a little bit, and upgraded it. I guess boost upgrades about the same thing, but uh, redone some of the stuff texture-wise and uploaded it for Microsoft Flight. It cost 20 United States American dollars. Uh, the outside model looks pretty darn good if you ask me. I've never seen one in person, so I can't uh, vouch for that exactly, but given what pictures I've seen and whatnot, it does look pretty good. Uh, the interior is decent. It's not the best I've seen, but it's definitely not the worst I've seen either. Uh, the afterburners are modeled in, and the wings do uh, sweep back and forth just like as they would in real life. <clears throat> you can open the bomb bay doors as well. And the only visual effect I have seen that is not in here, uh, at least to my knowledge, is the when you're transitioning to Super Sonic, you don't have the cone or the Sonic Boom. That's literally it. Uh, it has engine start, smoke, uh, and all that cool stuff. Uh, so let's hop into the cockpit here. We'll go over it just for a second. Uh, so again, I don't know what they actually look like in real life, uh, but it looks pretty good, if you ask me. There's a couple spots that have kind of low quality uh, for resolution-wise, which is just right here. Now, one thing you will notice with this is it's got a couple pros and cons to it so it doesn't have a whole lot of buttons that actually function inside it uh, actually i'd say 90 percent of them don't uh, so that can be good or bad for you considering on how you like to fly uh, the downside to this is you can't be very realistic with it uh, as in following all the exact startup procedures whatnot and controlling the aircraft in a realistic manner, at least switches and button-wise. Uh, not talking about flight model. Flight model seems decent. Seems pretty accurate to me. So that is the downside to that. The upside to it is, one, if you don't have a very powerful system, since it does have less moving components and coding and scripting to it, it functions and performs way better than any of your more complex aircraft. So expect to have much higher frame rates and smoothness overall in the sim with this because of that. Uh, the other plus side is, is if you're not one to be extremely uh, like role playing wise or whatever you want to consider it, uh, it is a very simple aircraft to start up and get to flying and airborne. Uh, so that's the pros and cons to it. I do prefer the more in-depth aircraft, so that's kind of a bummer to me. But at the same time, this is really just a kill some time, just kind of a fun little aircraft for me to fly. Uh, I have been waiting for this for a while. There is another one in development by somebody. I can't remember who it is. Uh, whatever the company was, I remember thinking to myself, it will be very good. I cannot remember, though, offhand. Uh, so with that being said, I think it's time for us to get this puppy started and go over how to start it. So first thing you'll want to do to get this started is go to your overhead panel. And right in the center is your electrical panel. You'll simply just hit the battery on. External power does not work, so don't worry about that. Uh, you will go ahead and go down here and turn your gens on. And you can go ahead and turn on your two lights here, which is the anti-collision and position lights. The only really other button that works up here, at least as of 
this video is your pilot heat or p dot heat i always call it pilot heat i don't know why p dot heat and i don't know if that actually functions like as if it would in real life or not but i know you can flip it uh, so it might be modeled in it might not i don't know uh, yeah that's pretty much all you have up here right now there is a couple of lights here for if you're flying at night uh, you can turn on your dome lights and stuff like that uh, I am flying in real time, real weather, and we're at uh, Ellsworth Air Force Base, where they're actually based out of, at least some of them, about half of them or so. Uh, so after you got that, uh, you can go back towards your more standard view here. Uh, you can slide over a little bit if you want here, just so you can see everything. Uh, so simply all you do from here is hold down your engine start buttons for a couple seconds apiece. And if you come out here, you can see the engine start. At some point, it does have exhaust coming out. We're going to go ahead and get the rest of them started here. It don't take very long to get them started. I don't know how long it takes in real life. I've never flown out of this airport, and area so I don't know how well the scenery is going to look that'll be just something we figure out together unless you already know uh, but here you can start to see the engine exhaust is coming out of the engines which is pretty cool there's not a lot of aircraft actually have that and to be honest it actually looks really good compared to some of the other aircrafts I've seen that have the uh, exhaust modeled in You can see your startup progress up here up top. Uh, if you get your fan RPM, the engine temp, core RPM, fuel flow, oil pressure, and your power level. Uh, you'll see them balance out at about two and a half here on your engine temp. Uh, that's when you know they're pretty much started. Fan RPM is pretty much at two. Uh, that is, of course, at idle. Uh, so now that you have the engine started, uh, you can go ahead and turn on your nav. If you are planning on doing any ILS, I've not actually tried ILS landing or anything like that yet. Uh, so I can't vouch if that works. But uh, right here's your squawk codes. I don't think you can switch the modes. I don't know if it'll actually project the squawk code for if you're flying like with something that would recognize a squawk code or not. Don't know. Uh, but you can turn on your other radio systems here. And that is pretty much all down here other than here's your taxi lights and your landing lights i'm going to go ahead and turn the taxi lights on but uh, none of these other ones work of course that's your throttle and your flaps and i want to get into the flaps here in a second because there's actually something pretty important to know about them uh, the other stuff that does work in here is you can check your never mind it doesn't work uh okay scratch that you can just go up here and you can look at your total fuel on board. That does work. Uh, center of gravity, I've not actually tried changing that. I have to see if that works. It may, it may not. I do not know. Uh, here's where you open your bomb bay doors at. We'll do that once we're up in the air. Uh, but as far as I'm aware of, nothing else works right here in the center. Come back over to your uh, default view here. And if you left click, you can go up to your, uh, turn your uh, vertical uh, VS, whatever it's called. VS I think was what they're calling it on here, but I don't know if that's what it was called in real life. I can't remember. Um, but you can go up to the ILS for your ILS landing. This is your terrain and uh, terrain avoidance and terrain follow. Uh, and it's and to get this to go back and forth, it's left and right clicking. Uh, you don't scroll or anything. Uh, here's your autopilots, stuff like that. This is for your vertical speed here. This is for knots and mock. And this is your barometric pressure, which I'm going to go ahead and set that now. And you can see your true airspeed and ground speed right here. You can flip that little switch here to see it. And this is your autopilot. Uh, buttons here, which I will go over that as well. 
And so now that we are started and we have our landing lights on, let's see, our wind is coming from pretty much the north. So we're going to taxi to the south here and take off on whatever runway this is, 31. Uh, so with your flaps, uh, this is kind of nice, at least in my opinion, because with the F-111 and you had to move the wing sweep by hand until recently. Uh, but your flaps is done by, or your wing sweep is done by your flaps. So this is technically uh, zero flaps right now. So I'm going to get tax in and we'll talk about that on the way. Uh, excuse me, cart here while I just nose around. Technically, I should have got pushed back, but that's okay. Alright, so yes, if you hit flaps down one time, you'll notice the wing sweep goes up to its semi cruise position. I don't know what the exact standard would be called for this. Um, probably more or less of a degree of an angle. You hit it one more time, it goes to the fully extended, and then if you hit it one more time, it does flaps down one notch. Again, it goes to your second notch, and then finally three notches down is your full flaps. So I'm going to go ahead and bump it up to just one notch of flaps for takeoff. And we'll taxi on down to the end here. <laughs> All right, so here we are at the end of the runway, and I'm gonna go ahead and get my landing lights on, taxi lights off, and I've got my flaps set correctly, and we'll go ahead and pull out. I'm gonna mention one thing is, there is actually a manual for this aircraft. It took me a minute to find it because it was not in the downloads and I never did see where it said you could find one if there even was one. I may have overlooked it somewhere. Uh, maybe they'll add in the link somewhere to where you can easily find it. Uh, there's actually one online uh, that actually comes with this. Uh, I'll leave the link in the uh, description so you can find it if you have any further questions about this aircraft that I may not have covered and let's roll. I'll show exterior view. You can't see the afterburners firing there. The sounds are decent for the aircraft. They do have their own unique sound, so they're not some like standard sound. Uh, I've heard better sounding jets before. I've also heard worse. So, uh, positive rate of climb here, gear up, and I'm going to go to exterior view so you can see the animation of the gears, at least a little bit there. I'm going to retract my flaps. Go ahead and hit it one more time for retracting. You can see the wing sweep going back there. And the flight, I was talking about the flight model a little earlier, it does seem pretty good. You can definitely tell there's a difference in the aerodynamics as you sweep the wings. Continue on a 
great heading for now. We'll go ahead and sweep the wings all the way back. And what I'm going to do right now is go over the autopilot. Uh, so it's already in command mode. Make sure that's green. And you want to, of course, go ahead and engage it. And as soon as you do that, it'll hit altitude hold. Uh, if you want to keep climbing, just go ahead and enable your vertical speed and then change it here. Or if you have a key binding for it, that works too. And so I've had a little issue once at least with the heading hold. It kind of acts weird. I had it working pretty good yesterday and then the day before it was working wonky. Uh, it's supposed to follow this. So when you engage it, it, it pumps it forward and it's supposed to be your current heading and then you simply move it from there. However, one time it just kept on turning and it done a full 360 and I could never get it to stop even though heading hold was engaged and it should have kept going. Uh, so yeah, I don't know about that one. Uh, but as you can see it's working just fine this go round uh, for your mock. If you want to hold, technically I'm illegal right now going over Mach 1. Uh, you can either hold this up or there is, or use your key binding. I've actually not tried this speed hold, so let's try it out. We'll get Mach hold since we're doing that. Let's see if it actually works. Bank left here. And if you prefer to click and not use all your buttons and stuff, right here is for your wing sweep and flaps. So if you do prefer to do it that way, right there it is. Should be about 0.94 now. It does seem to be holding it. Okay, cool. Somewhat. Now I'm at to mock one point or holding won't to hold one point three two and it's not actually holding it. Let's re-engage it and see what happens. Yeah, it's not exactly holding it. So there is some bugs I've had with the autopilot, uh, which might get resolved. hopefully. Uh, but once you are at an altitude you are happy with, all you do is simply click the altitude button and it will turn off your vertical speed and it will hold whatever altitude you are at when you click the button. At least it's supposed to. And it's definitely not this time. going back up.
does have the animation of the nozzles opening and closing, or spreading, rather, for when you do engage afterburners. Uh, let's open the bomb bay doors. So again, all you do is click that, and they open, and you can see your ordnance inside. Okay, it did hold the altitude, it just went into a deep dive there for a minute to get back to it, and then it done a steep climb to get back to it again, uh, but it is holding at what I had said to. So yeah, this is the B1 Lancer at cruise. It does have a top speed of 1.2, I believe it is. Engage your afterburners here to see if it does reach that. There is, as of right now, only one livery that comes with it, uh, which I believe this is for the Dyes Air Force Base. I could be pronouncing that wrong. It's the southern end of the United States. Uh, I imagine that's what that stands for, for that Air Force Base. I'm sure there will be more mo or, uh, liveries to get online for free after some time. See, I'm, uh, oh, I'm about 1.2 right now. Still climbing a little. slowly climbing up. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much the takeoff and cruise portion of this. I'm going to go ahead and slow back down and I'm going to start preparing to go back in for a landing. Uh, so to begin our descent, I'm just going to engage my vertical speed and simply change my vertical speed. I am still flying via autopilot right now. And I'm going to just take over and fly by hand a little bit. Go ahead and extend my wings out just one notch there. Yeah, the scenery is not too bad out here. I don't know, like I said, I've never flown out this way before, so. I 
this has been kind of a nice little change of pace. So here we are coming up for landing. I'm going to go ahead and spread my wings, lower my landing gear. A little sensitive there. A little off center, it looks like. Mm, windy. I do have 30 mile an hour winds right now. All right, so I've got my uh, speed brakes deployed. And now just letting it roll and slow down. Not too bad, I guess, for my second landing. Went ahead and retracted my flaps. shelf here. And now we're just going to taxi on back to a parking spot. Go ahead and turn my taxi light back on and landing light off. Now that I'm clear of the runway.
All right, now that I'm parked, uh, you pretty much just do everything in reverse order. Landing lights off, and you right click to turn the engines off. And you can see that they have turned off. Yeah, not too bad of a parking job, a little crooked there. Uh, but then you can just simply go through, turn all this stuff off. Uh, go back up to your overhead panel here, turn your generators off, P dot heat, and your lights there, and then your battery. And that is how you fly the B1D Lancer. Uh, so hopefully you found some insight, as if you do like this aircraft, or think you might. Uh, like I said, it's got some pros and cons to it. Yeah, for 20 bucks, I'd say for myself, it was worth it. Uh, since it's modeled pretty good, the flight physics feels pretty good. The sounds are pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't pay no more for that, uh, since it doesn't have much of a interior button and switches wise. Uh, but overall, I think it's pretty good. And if you do like your military jets, and you like the B-2 Spirit, and you've wanted to add a supersonic bomber to your collection, I'd say it's a pretty good uh, addition for now, at least until the next one comes out. And then I'll have to do a review comparison and see what the exact difference is between the two. Uh, but thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you found this video useful, helpful, or just had fun. Uh, please add some comments in if you wish to see or want any questions answered about it or anything else. And as always, safe flying.